Hi, this is Don Baker, and what I've got here is a demo of a synchronizer for a synchromesh four speed transmission. I have built a V8 that is one inch bore by one inch stroke. It represents a roughly 400 cubic inch engine that's scaled down to quarter scale. And it's complete with supercharger and, and everything, and it runs really good, but I decided. I needed another project and I decided I'd try to build a old school Muncie four speed transmission or at least based on that design. So what I've got here is a setup to uh, to verify that uh, I can actually make it work. I didn't want to get too far in the project and then figure out I couldn't do it. So I built up really one synchronizer for one gear and it's set up on the lathe here for a demo and the spindle acts as the rear end, the tail housing, uh, drive shaft, of output shaft of the transmission. And on the tail stock we've got basically what represents the mass and size of a clutch plate quarter scale. It's free spinning and so when it's disengaged there's no connection. When you put it in gear it connects the two together. And the object is when it's spinning, if the speeds are not matched, when you try to put it in gear, it won't go into gear until the speeds are matched exactly. I machined all this stuff on conventional manual machines. I don't have any CNC. And the synchronizer part is right in here. And like I said, this represents the clutch mass. And it's free to spin. This is some full scale parts for a Muncie synchronizer. There are three basic parts to it. The blocker ring, the sleeve, and the hub. These are splined together with the 36 tooth spline. There's some other parts here missing but I want to keep this fairly short. And the blocker ring all fit together like so. And when you go to shift gears the blocker ring won't let the sleeve slide forward unless everything is neutralized and that can only happen if the speeds are matched. So I'll try to do a quick demo here to show you how this thing works. First I'll zoom it in so you can see the parts a little better. I think that'll be about right. Maybe just a little bit backed off there. Whoops. Right there. This will be a little noisy, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to hold the clutch plate so it doesn't rotate. You can see it's not rotating, and I'll throw it in gear with the other hand. So here we go. Now we're at speed with maximum mismatch in speed. I'm shifting the gear, it brings the other side up to speed. Take it out of gear, of course, it comes back. It works, very, works good at all various speeds. It also works in both directions. And I copied the full size parts the best I could and it seemed to work out really good. The 36 tooth spline was kind of the, the tough thing to make. I ended up making a shaper uh, to cut the teeth. It's an attachment to my vertical mill and it works real good. And I was able to get the clearances between the sleeve and the hub down in the uh, less than a thousandth of an inch range where I needed it to be. I'm going to pull it apart here so you can see the parts a little bit better. Crank the tail, tail stock back. You can see in here is the, the sleeve riding on the hub and the blocker ring is riding on the gear here. It's tapered just like the real one. Full size one. You can see the two together here. They're identical, although all grooves and everything. This represents the fourth gear in the Muncie, so there's a piloted bearing between the two shafts, just like in the real McCoy. And the shift lever, of course, is what would be on the outside of the transmission. 
through the shift fork and everything and used to to ride in the groove on the sleeve. Yeah, it works pretty good. I'm real happy with the results. I think I've got enough information now to proceed with the, with the whole project. Thank you. Talk to you later.